Let's go to John chapter 4, verse 13. In John chapter 4, there was this, this woman who was drawing some water from a well. And Jesus, he was traveling with his disciples. And um, the disciples had gone away to take care of some business. And Jesus was alone, but he was a little thirsty. And he saw this woman and he asked this woman, he said, will you please draw some water from the well for me? And the woman looked at Jesus and she said, you know, you Jews don't really associate with people like us. How are you going to get water? The water is, the well is deep. You don't have anything to get the water from. And Jesus looked at her and said, woman, if you knew who was asking you for water, you would have asked him for living water. Because the water that I have to give, you will, you will never thirst again. In John chapter 4, verse 13, it says, Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. I know this one young lady, she, uh, she got saved. The Lord started moving in her life. She grew up seeing the power of God in operation. She had this joy for God, such a zeal to live for the Lord, just excited. And she would run out and she would even go and lead others to Jesus. The glory of God was on her life and she just wanted more of the Lord. And she was running so strong. I mean, we could not even keep her out of the, the church. She was here all the time. She desired more of God. She had such a great love for the Lord. And that love was so contagious because, you know, Jesus is beautiful. And that love was so contagious that others will be drawn to her. And she began to share the love of Jesus with them. And she would lead many people to Jesus. And she would see signs and wonders and miracles. And God would answer her prayers. And she had such life to live for God. She would even cast out devils. She would lay hands on the sick. She would preach the gospel. She would go into school, her own school. She was a student, and she'd go in her own school and lead people to Jesus. She wanted God with all her heart. But as she began to get a little older, and then more responsibilities started rising up, instead of continuing in this walk with the Lord, she now didn't have as much time to grow with God. She got married. She began to have children. And then she had even less time for God. She forgot who she was. The Bible actually says it. It's like a person who, walk, who, who sees himself in the mirror and walks away but forgets what they look like. And that's what happened to this young lady. Years have gone by. And now everything about her when you hear the way she speaks, it's so negative. God is someone that maybe is in the corner someplace, but she forgot who she was. So instead of seeing God as the same God that could deliver her from her oppression, she's trying to answer the questions in her own mind, in her own strength. She talks about how tired she is. She talks about how angry she is. She talks about how others are, are mistreating her. And she gets to a point where, where she just begins to curse everybody else and she just wants to be left alone. What happened to her? She started strong. She had this amazing life. Growing with God, she saw things that most of you will never ever see. What happened? She began to live in the flesh and not in the spirit. We are spiritual people. And the power that
that we have is not in the flesh, it's in the spirit. We are not called to live according to the flesh. We are called to live in the spirit. Anytime we do things in the flesh, it leads to death. This body is designed to only exist and then it will die. But the real you, your spirit man, will live forever. And God doesn't call you to live in the flesh. He calls you to live in the spirit. If you go to your own resources, you go to your own thoughts, your own ways, your own plans, your own goals, your own ideas on how to live life, you will only, only go so far. You might say, oh, pastor, I have all this education. I've been planning my life since I was five years old. I'm going to get married at 26. I'm going to have 2.2 kids. I'm going to have this type of degree. I'm going to live in this type of house. We're going to have the white picket fence, and everybody's going to love me. And you have your own thoughts and your own goals. Oh, yes, I'm going to become this. I'm going to become that. And you have your own ways. And, you, and they tell you, just get on that path. Just start walking that walk. You'll get there. And then you go through some struggles. And, and it's amazing how the world, they just want you to go more and more into the flesh. They'll tell you, okay, yes, oh, you're going through struggles. But you got power in you. You are the, you are the key. You, there's a secret. You're the secret. And they try to get you to pull from your own resource and they try to get you to think that, yes, I am good enough. I am strong enough. I can do this. And God never called you to that life. He calls you to go down and to humble yourself before the Lord. Even if you have strength, you are supposed to walk humble before God. God, I need your help. I need your wisdom. I need your knowledge. I need you to lead me. I don't want to lead myself. I don't want my thoughts for my future. I want your thoughts for my future. I'm not here to live my life. I'm here to live your life. The Bible says that when we come to God, that we've been crucified with Christ, yet we live, not us, but Christ is in me. Tell your neighbor, Christ is in me. And everyone is trying to save their own life and try to come up with their own goals and their own direction for their life instead of going before God and, and saying Lord please speak to me your vision your dreams for me not what some preacher says not what some pastor says but what does God say about you People will come and they'll say, Pastor, tell me what I'm supposed to do. And I'll tell you, go before God and find out. I'm not your God. I'm not your Savior. The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, He dwells in me, but He also dwells in you. Amen. 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 And He will give you the direction for your life. This woman forgot who she was. And instead of living in the spirit, she began to live in the flesh. That's why you need the drugs, you need the alcohol, you need all those things because the flesh wants to get rid of itself. The flesh doesn't even like itself. Why should you like it too? Amen? That's why, the, that's why people drink. It's because they're trying to get rid of their problems. They talk about, we're going to have a party. And they drink until they can't drink no more. But guess what? Tomorrow's another day. And it comes with a headache. And the problems are still there. And you are still there. Nothing's changed. Amen? So I want to speak to you about living in the spirit. Because when we live in the spirit, there's freedom there. When you live in the spirit, there's victory. When you live in the spirit, you're going to be happy about who you are and where you're going. Some people, they, 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 they've asked me, they've asked me what kind of minister you are, and they'll see me, and they, they have some dreams, and they think that, you know, I'm, I'm a certain way. And they'll, they'll come in, and they'll say, you know, you know, in a short time, you're going to be in front of, you know, a church of 10,000 people, 
and you're going to be this and you're going to be that. And I'm thinking, Lord, help me. <laughs> I just want to be who God wants me to be. Amen. If God wants me just to disciple five people the rest of my life, I'll be excited. Because it's not my life, it's his. Amen. I just want to be who he wants me to be. Nothing more, nothing less. Well, pastor, don't you have an ambition? Don't you want to grow ministry to a certain level? I want to get as many people saved. That's my desire. And those that the Lord puts before me, I want to teach them on how to live for God. That's my desire. Well, how many people will be that? Who's in front of me? Those are the ones. Amen. See, there's a peace when you're serving and you're living for the Lord. When you live for yourself, you, you live like hell right now. How can I make my marriage work? Stop being selfish and living for yourself. When you live for yourself, it's about what is it in it for me. Tell me what you're going to do for me. Jump through the hoops. Make me happy. And then we want God to do the same thing. God, if you really want me, you better do this. As if God needs you. Hello. You need him. Thank God he's given you him. He's given you all things. Amen. And I want to encourage you to live in the spirit, not in the flesh. It's not about the power of your might, but it's the power of his might. There's th there's, every time I move in the flesh, I lose. But every time I walk in the spirit, I win. Amen. Every time I try to do it in my strength, I lose. I'm telling you, if I ask people, you know, why you have debts? Oh, it's because, you know, I got, you know, I had a, a, a new car. I had school loans. I had bought a house. I had to get some clothes, whatever it is. You ask me, how do you got debts? It's because I, I paid for plane tickets to go to foreign countries. It's because I put... I gave to certain ministries that asked me for help. It's because I paid for debts instead of waiting for the Lord. I'm learning. I'm learning to wait upon the Lord. I refuse to do anything in my own strength anymore. I will do it being led by God. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I am following the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, follow the Holy Spirit. Go with me to a scripture in uh, Romans. Praise the Lord. In Romans chapter 8. See, that woman at the well... She had had five husbands. Some people say, I wish it was back like yesterday because, you know, the morality of this world is, it's terrible. But yesterday used to be, time of Jesus, it was good. Here's a woman that had five husbands. Tell your neighbor there's nothing different. It's all the same. People are people. And the only reason why we have issues that we see that are wrong is because we're looking at the flesh. And as long as people live in the flesh, there's going to be problems in this world. There's going to be a day where we're going to cast this flesh aside and we're going to just live in the spirit, clothed in the glory of God. Amen. That's when Jesus says he promised there's going to be no more tears, no more death, no more hurts, no more pain. Amen. That's the promise that we live in. Amen. So don't, don't look at the things in the, in the world going on today and think, oh, man, wh what hope do we have? No, 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 no. Jesus is still alive. Amen. And he's never lost a battle yet. Amen. There's going to be a day that this flesh is going to end, but our spirit's going to live forever. Amen. Amen. In Romans chapter 8, verse 14, it says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. The only way that, the only thing that classifies a person as being 
a son of God is by someone being led by the Spirit of God. When you're being led by the Spirit of God, it's the Holy Spirit that's directing and he's the one that's leading your life. If you are your own Lord, you're the one that's saying, I'm not going to do this, I am going to do this. But if God, if, if Jesus is your Lord, you have to be led by the Holy Spirit in everything that you do. You have to humble yourself to the will and the plan of God for your life. When I began to grow with God, see, I was a good Christian. I came to church every Sunday. I was volunteering at the church. I was serving God the best of my abilities. My dad was a pastor. I had no choice. <laughs> But I didn't have a life with God. I didn't have a relationship with the Lord. I knew God as someone that my father knew. That's why his prayers were answered. And because I had a relationship with my father, if I needed something, I go to my earthly father and ask him to pray to his God so that I could receive. But when the Lord began to capture my heart and this hunger started rising up inside of me that I need to live in my own relationship with God. My eyes started being open and my heart began to desire to know who the Holy Spirit is. To have intimacy with him. And it started off in my own strength. I didn't know what to do. So I began to just speak. I began to go before God and ask him, can I know you? Can I have a relationship with you? And as I began to reach out to God, God began to come to me. And my prayers became different. Before I used to go in prayer because something was going wrong in my life and I needed help. And I'd go on my knees because that just seemed like the, the nice religious thing to do. Go on your knees. Hopefully find something on your knees. Hopefully get an answer while you're there on your knees. And I began to reach out for God because I wasn't, it wasn't just a need I had. I needed him. And I began to reach out for that intimacy. I didn't want to know God through the pastor. I wanted to know God personally. I didn't want just to know Moses who had encounters with God face to face. I wanted to be the one that had encounters with God face to face. And it was through that hunger and that desire that led me before God that when I said, when I fell on my face and I said, Heavenly Father, before I even got the words out of my mouth, he came with his presence. And his love was being outpoured upon my heart. That even whatever words I thought I was going to say or thought I was going to do and speak, those words got lost. Because he was, with, he was with me. And as I began to, to be with him, he began to take me into places of holiness and places of glory that are beyond my imagination that were available to anyone. I would go down and humble myself before God. But when I rose up, I rose up as a conqueror. I rose up anointed, I rose up strong, I rose up powerful, that it doesn't matter what happened in my life, I knew I already had the victory even before the battle. I knew my God was with me. Amen. And every one of us, the personal relationship with the Holy Spirit is available for every one of us. It's not about you knowing me as a minister. It's about you knowing him 
as your heavenly father, as Jesus, as your Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit as your great comforter and your guide. Amen. And as we go before God with that heart, just saying, God, I need you. Our intimacy and our walk with the Lord begins to grow. The pressures and the cares and the worries and the fears, they begin to be lifted. You begin to walk in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as you walk in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, let me tell you something. People who are with Jesus get all their needs taken care of. Even before they asked. Wherever the presence of the Lord Jesus came, wherever Jesus showed up, healing was there. If there was devils, the devils had to leave. If there were people that were sick, that sickness had to go. Eyes were open. Ears were, 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 were opened up. People who had leprosy, the skin would, would, would be brand new. Jesus' presence was so powerful that he would walk down the street and they used to line up people along the streets just in hopes that his shadow would come across them and they would be healed. Wherever Jesus was, there was no lack, there was no need, there was no want. Jesus never missed a meal. Even in the desert where there was no food, Thousands of people had gathered because they wanted to be with Jesus. Jesus said, what do we have? We just have a little boy's lunch. The Bible says that he, he blessed it and began to break it and it began to multiply that thousands of people began to eat to their content with leftovers out of a little boy's lunch. See, the presence of God is available for every one of us. And what happens is when we walk by the spirit, we receive strength over the flesh. When we walk in the spirit, it doesn't matter what's happening on the outside. When we walk in the spirit, we receive strength to overcome the things that are on the outside. If your body is broken, when you walk in the spirit, in the presence of God, your body will be healed in Jesus' name. If there's a need in the physical, when you walk in the spirit, answers to those needs, answers to those questions, wisdom and discernment will come upon your life and you will know what to do because the spirit of God is leading you. You'll know how to minister unto others because the spirit of God will speak to you. you know how or where you're supposed to go because the Lord will give you his peace. As many as are led by the Spirit, these are the sons of God. I have people that come and they get so excited to live for God. They get so excited about God. They give their heart to God and they say, okay, pastor, now I'm going to do this. Now I'm going to do that. Now I'm going to become this. Now I'm going to become that. And I'm, I'm there to wait, 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 wait. All I want you to do is be who the Holy Spirit tells you to be. All I want you to do is do what the Holy Ghost tells you to do. Why are you asking me to give you the direction for your life when you have the Spirit of God inside of you that wants to give you the wisdom of the Lord? Amen. That young lady, she's angry, she's bitter, she's broken. She's losing everything, but what, what she doesn't know is if she were just to take a step back and come back to her first love, the Spirit of God will show up and begin to minister to her and begin to bring healing in every area of her life. Whatever the devil has stolen will be restored in Jesus' name. We live by the Spirit, not by the flesh. Thank God for education. Thank God for work and opportunities. But we live by the Spirit. There's a lot of people that are educated, but they're homeless. There's a lot of people that are talented, but their lives are broken. Jesus promised to give us an abundant life. When we live by the Spirit, you will have an abundant life. Everything that they see and experience in the 99 is real.
The 99 is a reality walkthrough theater that focuses on the leading causes of death to teenagers and it graphically reenacts the end result of poor choices. The 99 is housed in a 20,000 square foot air structure that we build a very elaborate Hollywood type set inside. We have 16 right now college age interns that provide all the training to be able to put the 99 on. It also takes somewhere between 200 and 250 local volunteers each night. As they come through each room, they're seeing the different scenarios of car accident, drug abuse, they're seeing suicide, but they're seeing themselves in it as well. We're able to bring those people in that wouldn't come to a church, but when they get to the event, we do tell them exactly what the truth is, and it really opens them up and brings them to a point where their heart is ready to receive. Every teenager thinks they're invincible. Once they come out of that last room, you don't see a single jokester in that group. You know, they're all serious. They're all at a decision point in their life where they need to choose to make a decision for Christ or to make a decision for themselves. Praise God, thousands of people are making that choice to live for Jesus. We go through this production every night and teenagers and adults' lives are changed because they're finding answers that they can't get elsewhere. Not only is the 99 just showing you the difference between heaven and hell, but they are really serious about trying to get you around people that can disciple you. We have a full wall that's our wall of prayers with their requests saying, my father's in prison, my mother's in prison, people that need help. One son said, I want you to help me forgive my father because he died last week. We get letters, we get emails telling us. I put that request up and I had an answer. The Lord spoke to us to believe him for a million teenagers every year. He spoke to us that if we would build it, that the people would come. Kids are making eternal decisions to really change and turn their life around. Invited to our next church service this Sunday at 11 a.m. Come to Faith Pleases God. Hear an inspiring word. Experience the presence of God. And claim your miracle in the name of Jesus. I want to invite you to Faith Pleases God. I know Jesus will change your life. You can also watch us live online at faithpleasesgod.com. Faith Pleases God Church. All are welcome.